I have no hate in my heart for Anthony Kim. Nobody does. I've never heard of anybody having any hate in their heart for Anthony Kim. He wasn't pushed out of the game by some higher power, and now he's got this axe to grind. It's uh, That's not the storyline whatsoever. I am so sad that you're gone. You've been gone for 12 years. We missed you. I want to kiss you on the lips. I want to yes. I want to hug you. I want to I want to do I want to I just want to get I want to see you. Foreplay presented by Barstool Sports. We got the entire squad today. There's a lot to talk about. Uh memes. We love golf memes. We were just kind of mentioning it before the show. We said we had to save it. Taylor Gooch really just kind of took over golf Twitter over the last day or two which we love to see he had uh he's just known for some some explosive comments he just i don't think he means them that way we've had him on the show before nice guy great friends of max homa he was the player of the year over there he won three times last year on live the whole thing uh but he's just had some moments he had the moment where he was just waiting outside to get into the tour championship a couple years ago only to find out that he just simply didn't get in he said that he compared uh, what getting chosen for a team on live to like playing in the Ryder Cup, which is laugh out loud funny. He's never played in the Ryder Cup or the President's Cup, from what I know. And then he's got the quotes yesterday about the asterisk with Rory, which went all over the place. We're going to talk all about that. We got closest to the pin. We got a great uh, from the gallery that I would like to discuss. We had the match number nine that we could kind of do a quick review of what we saw, what we liked, what we did not like. Let's start real quick, real quick. Let's go. Anthony Kim, he was the focus of our last show. He's now real footage of Anthony Kim of uh, Bigfoot out in the wild, hitting golf shots in Jeddah uh, in Saudi Arabia. He looks, I tweeted this out, he looks exactly like I expected Anthony Kim to look after coming out from 12 years. He's got like the man bun that was coming out. He had a like a baggy t-shirt, shorts, the high socks. Uh, just looked exactly like Anthony Kim was expected to look in my opinion, but I'm not a swing expert. Looked like he got plenty of speed. His swing is still fucking sick. It reminded me right away of why Anthony Kim was the man. He just, he had that carefree kind of attitude, awesome action. Uh, and we've got real footage of Anthony Kim in the wild now. Yeah. Anthony Kim doesn't give a fuck. No, he just no, doesn't he does give not. a fuck. He's never given a fuck. Took an insurance policy out on his body. And then it's just like, I'm out of here. And then he's just like, I'm done with golf for 12 years. I'm not going to talk to a single person. You're not going to know where I am. You don't know if I'm living in a hotel in Vegas. You don't know where I'm at. I'm going to come back. I'm going to wear pajamas to the golf course. and No one's going to give a fuck. He, he really, I've never met a guy that just doesn't give a fuck more than Anthony Kim. And what was that post about to all my haters? I'm back yeah, that, or something like that. That was, that was this, the official, you know, comeback video. And this is kind of a thing with live. Like this is the theme. They're very, oh, fuck the haters. It's like. The reason that people care about you is because everybody loves you. It's been 12 yeah, years. Yeah. You haven't played golf one time. The literal <laughs> reason you're making million dollars to play this week is because everybody loves you. I have no hate He's... in my heart for Anthony <laughs> Kim. Nobody does. I've never I... heard of anybody having any hate in their heart for Anthony right, like, Kim. He wasn't, he, wasn't, <laughs> he wasn't pushed out of the game by some higher power, and now he's got this axe to grind. It's, uh, that's not the storyline whatsoever. It's very much a guy who we were like, I am so sad that you're gone. You've been gone for 12 years. We missed you. I want to kiss you on the lips. I want to yes. I want to hug you. I want to I want to do I want to I just want to get I want to see you. And and then he's like, "I'm back, haters." You're not Michael jo like you're not it's not that way at all. Yeah, I'm sorry. Dude, someone would, that would, so, so, someone tweeted like, "Oh, uh, Arnold Palmer comes back from the dead." Hi haters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It'd be like Trent Ryan showing up to one of these bachelor live shows and being like, "I'm here, you fucking haters." Everybody's like, "What?" Yeah. <laughs> you throw roses at you. we will fucking love you, dude. Yeah. Maybe uh, he didn't so, get he didn't get pushed out by a higher power, maybe a higher powder. Hey. Um, whoa. Hey. Yeah, I wonder if he was on that Johnny Manziel diet. Oh. I wonder if he was on that Johnny oh. Manziel strict diet Shit. of blow for he lost 40 pounds in three months or Bronzy whatever bars was. over here? Or what? <laughs> what a comeback for Johnny Manziel. I know we ran into him just very quickly at the Desert Open. Great guy. He did Shannon Sharp's podcast. An incredible podcast. He is like, he's just a, such an interesting cat. I'm sorry to take us away from Anthony Kim very quickly. but Well, that, they're, they're in the same ilk. They're in the same ilk for sure. Um, Is that true? Yeah, They've dude. Been in crazy the same early milk. success, you know. Crazy early success. Probably similar drugs of choice, and then both just Speculation. went away instead of coming instead of continuing to play their sport. But Johnny tried at least. He did. Yeah, he tried to come back. Uh, Johnny football is a big Scottsdale golf scene guy. He's always just a nice guy, super nice dude. He doesn't 
come off like uh i don't know for whatever reason you kind of think he might be he's too cool for school or whatever the whole deal he's always just been a super nice guy he likes to live his life he's a little eccentric he's out there doing his thing so he gave me like Johnny a three football. minute pump up speech at the desert open about breaking 90 like i was yeah, ready to incredible. run through all we're talking about one of the greatest college athletes of all time and he's in my ear being like you just got to be confident. You got to said do he it. watches every episode. Watches every episode. So yeah, I got I got love for I got love for Johnny Manziel. It's for amazing sure. how big Johnny Manziel was. Like we Dude. forget. Oh. Thank God they. Oh my God, he was the biggest thing in the fucking country for a year. I lost my shit when I saw him. I you know I don't typically like get you know starstruck like that. I saw him at the Desert Open. and I was like, holy shit! Like that's he's the one. He's because I was a freshman. I think we we're the same year. Maybe he he might be one year ahead of me in school. So I was a freshman in college. Or when he was winning the Heisman or whatever it was, and yeah, he I would wear his jersey out on like Friday nights, and that was like an acceptable thing to wear. Dude, we did a pizza review with him. I think the night of the Heisman oh, yeah. um, trophy ceremony in New York City, um, and it was like raining, and I just remember like that was the height of Johnny being Johnny, and it was fucking wild, man. Place went crazy on the street of him like eating pizza in like a, outside of a rainy like New York subway pizzeria. Superstar. And- he was like wild boy Johnny at that point. Like I remember I took a I took a selfie with him. I was fucking like 22 years old at that point. I just started. I took a selfie with him. He's like, ah! and, like in the in the <laughs> selfie. He's like, ah! <laughs> and looking back at it like that was that was that was Johnny was in the thick of it. At oh, that if point. you watch that Shannon Sharp interview, he was like, I was Ooh. in it. I was doing wild shit. Yo, he was so high during that pizza review. If anyone wants to go back and watch that, it's so apparent. <laughs> Dude, I want to be clear. He, we love Johnny Manziel. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Of course. Uh, I mean, he's the most he's the most open about it of all time. He literally said he lost forty pounds. He did say uh, but on a strictly cocaine diet. I mean, it's not like I'm saying anything. <laughs> it's crazy. It's the strictest also, diet of blow for like ten for however many years. For like six him. months. <laughs> yeah. He also just did like he did the dream thing that no one ever actually does. Like he was the best player. He was fucking winning everything. He was doing all the drugs and like hanging out, hooking up with every chick yeah. he could possibly hook up with. And it's like people talk about doing the dream, but people were disciplined. And he was like, no, no, I'm actually fucking doing yeah, it. Yeah. And I think did it as hard did, as you could do it. He did what everyone was hoping that he was doing. He said that and that the right. second half of that quote with the with the blow is that he said that he would go into his basement with the biggest bottle of Hennessy he could find and just blast future all day long. <laughs> right. That's if, if I'm like, what was peak Johnny Manziel like? That's what, what I picture. Doing? What are you doing? <laughs> it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, um, anyways, Anthony Kim. Yeah, he's kind of back. He's uh, he's back. So I'm excited to see how he plays this weekend. I think a lot of people are. On the same note, Live Golf announced kind of a TV deal. Uh, I didn't even see this really come across my radar. I was scrolling through some golf uh, websites trying to figure out what was going on in the world, and I saw this come up. Um, a little Caffeine TV. They got a TV deal with Caffeine TV on friday barcel sports has been on caffeine tv before uh this is like um so it's interesting they're gonna be still i think they have the cw deal for the weekend but one of their big issues with they didn't have anything for friday tv rights obviously any sports league in the world makes most of their money from tv rights so the fact that live didn't really have any or hadn't had anything that was you know some of the big names box whatever that you might have heard has always been looked at as kind of a negative uh this caffeine tv situation uh it's got different like influencers i saw it's got like the x games it's got like bowling it's had stuff like that they're gonna carry the friday coverage of uh live golf i believe throughout the remainder of the year i saw that like the murdoch family which is obviously the fox backing uh put in like 150 million dollars into this caffeine tv thing so you could look into the fact that maybe greg norman connections there he's on fox news whenever he does tv stuff maybe there's a future for fox fox used to do some golf and then they basically just got the hell out of it when they had Joe Buck and Greg Norman up there. So maybe there's a future pathway that they're trying to carve here where Liv ends up, you know, through Fox, Fox Sports, whatever it might be. Uh, but Caffeine TV on Fridays, boys, if you want to watch a little Liv Golf action. It's where do channel? I watch? Yeah, where do I, yes. I was going to say, where do I watch uh, Caffeine I don't know. TV? Uh, I think it was originally supposed to be presented as like a competitor to Twitch, and then they just realized that Twitch was unstoppable and kind of pivoted to putting, I guess, sort of like, second tier type content that's not as mainstream on there and seeing if it can it blow up they touting a bunch of uh uh you know growth in terms of active users over the last six months blah 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 
I don't exactly know how you find it either, but it's called Caffeine TV. It looks like it's like ca- <clears throat> caffeine.tv. It's just kind of like a, it's a streaming service, it would appear. Okay. But it's, right, so it's go. not on like Verizon Fios. I don't think so. So then what's the difference between that and them just being on like li- on their live website? It's a great question. Great question. Maybe really don't a little answer. bit more it's distribution. Gotta be, it's got to be a TV. I don't think it's it gotta, is, bro. Like I've gotten to the age now where like these guides on these TV on the TVs um, are way, way too complicated. Like I can't find the mm-hmm. channels anymore. So Verizon Fios, no free ads, but you can speak <clears> into the into the remote. And I've I've never since I've had Verizon in this house for two years, I've never once typed in a number for a channel. I've only just said it. Yes channel for the Yankees, MSG plus for the Islanders. And now I will go down there and I'll say caffeine. And if it brings me to a channel, it brings me to a channel. Yeah, true. Top of the Wikipedia just says caffeine is a live streaming platform for gaming, sports and other entertainment content. I don't know if that did that much for me. Um, all right. A little reaction to um, Taylor Gooch. Let's talk about the Taylor Gooch situation. So he uh, gave some quotes. He's talking about the major championships. He's not into uh, the master's field. He said, uh, and I quote, if Roy McIlroy goes and completes his grand slam without some of the best players in the world, there's just going to be an asterisk. It's just the reality. I think everybody wins whenever the majors figure out a way to get the best players in the world there. This immediately got him just pretty much roasted everywhere. We were talking about the memes. I think maybe the funniest one that I saw was like, what a great moment this would have been if Taylor Gooch were in the field. And it was Phil Mickelson putting the green jacket on Tiger Woods in 2005. Uh, so there were a lot of good ones out there, um, you know, just kind of a preposterous what, quote. What was the question that he was asked? I'm sure it was about, you know, world ranking points. I, they're really hammering that home because it's, you know, they're trying to put pressure on everyone to get to, to give them world ranking points and get in. So I'm sure it was something like the about only that. way, because for me, the only way that's a semi acceptable answer, which is still probably not, is if the reporter said, do you think there should be an asterisk if Rory McIlroy wins the masters in with this type of field. If he just like went on his own and decided to sucker punch Rory McIlroy about with a masters quote, I I'm very confused by the whole thing. Rory had to have been brought up somehow in the conversation. I, I find it very hard. I, I'm going to do some research. I'm going to do some I was, research right now. That's what I was wondering. Cause the question is always very important. Now he also has to answer it in a way that's not going to spawn a thousand million memes. But I, I, I couldn't imagine if they were just like, what do you think about the world ranking points in regards to the Masters and who gets invites and who doesn't? And he was just like, you know what I think? I think if Roy McIlroy wins this thing, there should be an asterisk. <laughs> like, that would be an insane thing to say. I don't know the answer, but I'm going to I'm going to say that Roy McIlroy was not in any way part of the question and that his answer was just, you know what I think about world ranking points in the Masters tournament? I think that Rory McIlroy, if he wins this fucker, is going to have to just live with an asterisk the rest of his life. If that's <laughs> true, Taylor Gooch is even more of a loose cannon than we originally thought. And yeah. when we had him on, I didn't think that he was. He was just like a nice, kind of a quiet guy. He's had some quotes since then that are kind of off the wall, like we mentioned up top. But if Rory McIlroy was not mentioned in the question to Taylor Gooch and he brought up Rory, that's crazy. Well, the interesting thing is that Rory said, they because Rory was asked a couple weeks ago if he wins bay hill or if he wins riviera is there you know is it less special basically i don't know if the word asterisk was used because a lot of those guys aren't there and he said yes but that's a different conversation because that's saying that these there are definitely some of the best players in the world who aren't in pga tour events anymore right. the problem with what gooch said is is that there's 12 live guys who are playing in the masters this year the best players on live are playing in the masters this year yeah right the djs the brookses the the cameron smiths he might be right five years down the road if those guys miss out and aren't in it anymore because their exemptions dry up. But right now, you, you really can't say that, especially because is Brooks's major that he won in 2023, you know, cheapened? Is his partner's, right. is, is his teammate's major cheapened? So I, I get what he was trying to say, but he, he really put his foot in his mouth with it. Um, and yeah, I, you know, it, bringing Rory's name into it, I think was really, if you say, uh, you know, I think there's some of the best players in the world. And then he responded to me on Twitter because I said, you know, basically, there are 12 guys in, the, in live in this. So what he's really saying is there's an asterisk because Taylor Gooch is not in the field. And he said, no, what I meant was that, you know, Mark Leishman and Mito Pereira and Carlos Ortiz. And it's like, those are good golfers for sure. But there's always guys who aren't in the Masters. Yeah. 
there's only 82 guys who are in it every year. Like, you know I was going to say, I mean? on any given year, I think those those names you just mentioned could be or not be in the Masters, and I wouldn't be surprised in any way. I, you know, I just think that they're they're not locks to be in there. And I, you know, I understand that with how good of a year he had on live last year, I understand that he is coming probably from a frustrated standpoint of being, you know, probably deserving on merit to be in the field but he's not and a big part of the reason i think that he's not is he has refused to play the game like last year when he didn't get an invite or special exemption or whatever into the u.s open he like refused to try to qualify even though a bunch of other people clearly did uh he has refused to go outside of live and play asian tour or whatever else to try to get world ranking points so he's like refused to play the game and i think that people like to see a little bit of humility and like Joaquin Neiman, it's like he's got the international thing, all that, but he played the game. He's gone outside. He's done well. He's gotten points outside of it. And clearly, people kind of want to see a little bit of humility from someone in Taylor Gucci's spot and say, we know you took the payday. We know you guys are like live against the world and all of that. But if you go and play in a few other events or you try to qualify for the U.S. Open and say, hey, I get that this is part of the risk when I left that we might not get into some of the majors, so I'm going to try to qualify. Thank you to the U.S. Open for being an open event. And he just refused to play any of those games. And I think people now are more inclined to be like, well, fuck you. No, you're not going to get in. And that sucks for him. But it's like you got to play the game a little bit. Yeah. And st- this guy, Stephen Jewell, responded to Taylor Gooch and Mike because he he listed those players. Bur- Dean Burmester, Ustazen, blah, blah, blah. The guy goes, since all of you care so much about the majors, let's go through and compare the 2023 U.S. Open qualifier since it should be easy for the best players in the world. Burmester didn't enter. Ustazen didn't enter. Mito missed the cut in the tournament. Carlos Ortiz missed the cut in the tournament. Harold Varner didn't get through qualifying. Kokrak didn't get through qualifying. Leishman didn't get through qualifying. Abe Anser finished T54. You didn't attempt to qualify. So, it, it, yeah, it, there would be an asterisk if Brooks Kepka and Dustin Johnson and Cameron Smith and John Rahm weren't there. But the guys that he listed, there's, there's, just, there's no asterisk. There just isn't. Yeah, he said something insane, obviously. We've all made fun of it. And we've all seen it. But at some point, do you see the argument from the live player side about these golf rankings i mean if, if yes. we're gonna have john rom on and we're gonna talk about how legitimate that that field is starting to become these guys have to start getting ranked amongst like we had to completely the agree that that a live event could have better golfers in it from week to week than a pga tour event so it's like at what point do we start to say winning that event or playing well in that event puts you in the same status as a guy playing well in the pga tour it's an interesting conversation because especially with, you know, some of the PGA Tour fields and the guys who are winning them, you know, it's it's not as deep as it used to be because those guys aren't there and winning a PGA Tour event still gets you into the Masters. And so right. at what point does the Masters say, "Okay, are we you know, do we want to go with every PGA Tour event gets you gets a win into the Masters?" It's definitely a a legitimate conversation and I've been on record many times saying the official World Golf ranking is obsolete. It's stupid. I can't believe they don't they didn't figure out a way to get live guys world ranking points. Um, but just it just was a he said it basically five years too early or three years too early. Yeah, it is crazy that there's no w- w- points whatsoever for them at this point. It's also crazy, like we talked about it six months ago, that they were like, yeah, the only pathway to do it is it's like a one year minimum process. You're like, no, no, why don't you just like do it like tomorrow? Just do it. Just be like, hey, this little system that we kind of created that we determine everything for everybody who gets into <laughs> everything. We're just gonna like give points to these guys that live because they clearly are really good. One of the guys just won the fucking PGA championship and almost won the masters. So like, obviously they're just really good. I, they could just do that. So that is absolutely a valid conversation. And it's kind of outrageous that they aren't getting any points, but I, I don't think they're going to change like the OWGR folks, right? They're just kind of, I don't know what they're going to do. They're just going to wait another year before they vote or go through the process, whatever the hell it is. Yeah, they said that Liv hasn't met certain criteria, but it's like change your fucking criteria. Like, like why? Right. It's your job is to rank golfers, and there are five or six other systems that have popped up that have found a way to to rank Liv golfers. It's really so this data that golf difficult. system. Is yeah. it the data golf one? I know Na- No Laying Up had like an oyster in their pants tweeting about this whole situation, but like they listed the top 50 golfers based off of the data golf and, and Gooch is in there. So, I mean, do you think he's seeing these lists of like, I'm a top 50 golfer right now, the way that I'm playing and I'm just not going to the masters. And that's, I mean, for a guy that probably loves to play in the masters, I think that's everyone's dream when you become a professional golfer. 
I think, and yes, he made his bed. He has to sleep in it. And obviously he's made his bed many times. He's making quotes like he's fucking Patrick Reed. Now every quote that this guy says so is good. like, does someone have you like Pinocchio? I mean, does he have an insane wipe or something behind, behind the keyboard? But I think we could all agree that we would all be fucking pissed off at some point. If you think that you're earning something and guys that are at your same level are getting in and you're not, you know what I mean? There's guys on his tour that are getting in. Yes, they've won, but I don't know. There's just something about if I was him, I'd be like, there is an argument here. Maybe you don't go after Rory McIlroy. That but... I think was the mistake. Yeah, like, I think there, I think there's people debate. on your side and and Danny is too, and I am too. Where it's like, at a certain point, you got to start giving these guys world ranking points. It makes no sense. He these... played really well on live for sure. Did not didn't he like win the live like he, he was won a player, player of the year? year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. What is, I'm... Like at some point, you got to give that guy something. I would be in favor of if they said the top five guys on live or the top whatever guys, you know, like top 30 on the PGA tour at the end of every year, get into the masters. They get into all the majors. I would be in favor of, of that. I, I do think that besides Gooch, it would be a lot of the same guys that are already in the majors because of how well we've played. But to your point, Taylor Gooch is number 40 in data golf and he's number 449 in the world rankings. That, that website, <laughs> man, that website has got us all is holding us hostage. I don't understand. Yeah. No, it's weird. It's weird. Uh, yeah, I you know I think a counter like people are kind of clapping back that like he's been in however many majors he's played in like eleven. I think he's missed the cut in four. He's never finished inside the top ten in a major, and he refuses to play the game. And at the end of the day, like the people that are making the decisions are people just like everybody else. They see these bombastic quotes about the Ryder Cup about Rory, uh, and they see that he refuses to play the game. He didn't try to qualify last year, and they're just kind of like, yeah, fuck you. You didn't get in and. And yeah, I think on a pure meritocracy, I understand why he's why he's rattled. But I think these kind of quotes and refusing to in any way play the game is not going to help his case at this point. I guess and, prior to there being two leagues and there being like a decision to be made, I've never seen your opinions and your quotes not get you into a tournament like the Masters on top of just how you've hit the golf ball. You know what I mean? Like, they're just like, we don't like you anymore. And I know it's invite only, but like, they've never really done that. Like, they, they usually give out the invite to the guys that are in top 50 and that are But I, well. I do think that you're right. There is a lot of similarities between the case of Taylor Gooch last year and the case of Joaquin Neiman this year. And they gave Joaquin Neiman the invite prop maybe because of the history they and because like of his chili. <laughs> they just like him they just feel like that's he's the master a nicer guy. yeah yeah it is yeah that's never really happened before but there was also an, an anecdote that that surfaced that he wore pra uh shorts to a to a master's practice round a couple years ago and was on the I mean, he's obviously for like 20 an asshole. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and some guy came up with rain pants and he had to put the rain pants on to keep practicing he's yeah he's got points throughout all of his, the things that he says he just goes about it the wrong way. Like again, going after Rory is outrageous, and I don't—I still don't know what the question was, so it could have been prompted. But his quote, regardless, is still fucking wild. Yeah. Uh, all right. What's going? What's going on with Lurch's company over there, Axon? Why are they up ten percent? Ten percent today? Uh, they Jesus. announced their earnings. They had their earnings call My yesterday. God. Yeah. I mean, my phone just started going crazy. Should be a fun weekend. Yeah, they're up twenty six dollars. Yeah. Their stock. Oh wow! It's great news yeah. for us. That's you know, as guys that are on basically the Axon Company retreat this weekend that we just somehow, no pun intended, lurched our way onto. That uh, we want that stock boom up twenty seven dollars and eighteen cents right now. That's pretty good. So it's up ten percent today. If you put your money in before that, you're ten percent increase. What, what are you That's how about? that works. That is. That's, hold on. Yeah. Hold PDTG. On. Yeah. Yeah. Checks out. We we are uh, not stock. What does Dave say that he's not a? Uh, we're not a financial advisors. Yes, we are idiots. I own a little but, bit of Axon. This is a great day. I'm excited. Same. Cars.com is a leading digital marketplace that connects car shoppers with their perfect car. If you haven't figured that out on your own, we're happy to help you get there. Cars.com has been doing it for 25 years. That's a quarter of a century they've been doing millions literally millions of possibilities up to 50,000 cars are added daily to cars.com you shop over 2 million cars for 2 million possibilities wherever life takes you next whoever you're looking to be there's a car for that on cars.com cars just an insanely important purchase a big part of your personality big part of your life big part of your family 
you want to take it seriously, you want to do it with the best in the business, which is cars.com. One of my friends just got a new car and I got in it. It's like all the compliments. Oh, it smells so nice in here. Look at this. He's showing me the infotainment screen. Mm. You know, the whole thing goes back. The whole, uh, the, the sunroof exposes. It's just like, it's an experience, man. Getting a new car. There's nothing like just getting in that new car for the first time, driving it around. It's like it's a different height, it's a different feel than you've ever had. You're like more cautious. You got both hands on the wheel. It's just a great feeling. It's accomplishment. You purchase them. You purchase something massive. It's a car, it's like man. A, it's yours. Like a new best friend too. You're gonna be with it all the time. You guys all are gonna go time. through a lot. Give it together. a name, maybe. It you guys name your cars? No. Well, me either. You but trip? people could. No, I I think it's a good idea though. I think it'd be nice to have like. Do a, you still have your car? No. No, uh, you gotta get oh, you, you gotta go to cars.com. You gotta get a new one. I want yeah, in the city's a little tough, but if I yeah, if I need in one, I'll go to cars.com. In, in the city. city. Uh once again, up to fifty thousand cars are added daily to cars.com. Find your next possibility on cars.com. Where to next? The match at the park. Um First of all, I can't believe this was the ninth version of these when we did the first one, Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson, 2018. I remember all the hype and whatnot around that whole thing. This was the ninth version of uh, the match. The park is insanely cool. We went yeah. there with Grant Horvat. That was the first time that we had ever done anything with him. We were out there filming all day. We saw the DOD King on the first tee, filmed a bunch of videos, experienced that property and what it is, PGA of America making these investments into places like this it's fucking awesome it's largely about the children which they highlighted really well and growth and getting kids into the game of golf having it be accessible fun so that they kind of find it early in life develop decent skills so that they're good at it and thrive at it and then enjoy golf throughout the rest of their life uh the park's got all kinds of cool stuff it's got huge like putting green it's obviously got bar restaurant it's got the 18 holes and then it's got like a lit up uh, nine hole par three deal. They lit up um, 12 holes on the main course for the match. So in terms of just the overall facility, it's right there in uh, West Palm Beach. It is absolutely fucking awesome. That place is as cool as it gets. We saw uh, Dylan Meyer, who's an Illini uh, graduate who's, uh, you know, playing pro. He's out there on the pro circuit. He was out there playing. We just all kinds of names are there. It tracks a lot of cool people. So that place is sweet. It presented great on TV. There were cool crowds. In terms of the actual golf, I don't know how many times we could say it at this point. You know, it it's not the most electrifying thing in the world. I think that you kind of have learned that on a golf front, the best players in the world, what makes them entertaining is when they're competing at the highest level for the biggest events. And when you've got them out there kind of slap dicking around, uh, Max is great. He's got good personality. You know, I thought Lexi uh, and Rose were, were in terms of personality front, like about all you can ask for. But there's just a lot of going on. And it's just hard for people that don't do it for a living, right? In terms of like entertain through the vacuum or through the vehicle of golf for a living. It just kind of is tough. It could be an awkward, like kind of cringy watch at times. And uh, so I, I, I'm not going to say that like the actual pure golf standpoint of it was the most riveting thing i've ever seen but in terms of the venue and under the lights and you've got big names like rory and max and rose and lexi and all that like that part of it is cool chuck's out there biz was out there dj Khaled was out there which was i think driving a lot of people crazy but he was out there uh it was a lot the venue was very cool i don't know that the golf has the most staying power of anything i've ever seen it kind of made me appreciate uh our editors in YouTube golf, because I think there's just, there was just so much dead time the the, the broadcast was yeah. so long. It was like almost four and a, four hours or four plus hours long. And it's just like you said, I mean, these are professional golfers who, well, I remember Xander Shoffle, uh said this when, when I had, when I interviewed him on the podcast, I was like, you don't really do much. He's like, my entertainment is the, is the golf. Yeah. I go out there and I play really good golf on really hard courses. And I feel like that's, I, that's where I'm entertaining. I, I don't think if you put a microphone in my face for four hours, that it would be, you know that fun of an experience for people to listen to, um, and so I just thought there was way too much dead time. And and, and I, 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 you know, if I was thinking if they could distill this down <clears throat> into like a forty-five minute piece of content where they'd show the best stuff, and then someone was like, "That's just YouTube golf. <laughs> That's just what YouTube golf is." And I was like, "Yeah, exactly. you know what? I understand why this thing is so popular." Yeah, I mean, I hate to shit on it because I I think if you probably went back and listened to podcasts when 
the Phil and Tiger one was announced, we're like, all right, great. Golf is trying something that's not just four days at a tournament that people are going to watch like the last couple hours of. It's good that they're trying something new. You get the biggest names. You mic them up. You make it less serious, but you put money on the line. Like, that's a great idea. And then you f- you fast forward however many years and however many matches. You said this was the ninth one. And, yeah, it's I, I echo a lot what you guys are saying, where you're just like a lot of dead time. I, I Yeah, I, I'm glad that golf is still trying to make – it like more accessible. You have Cal DJ Cal out there. You got biz out there. Chuck is out there, but it's just, it's not perfect. And it's probably not moving the needle. I'd be curious what the ratings were the way that certainly the first tiger and Phil one was where it was like, Whoa, this is the first of its kind. We're watching a one-on-one between two of the greatest golfers of all time. And then you play it out nine times. And I love Rory. I love max. I love everybody who was involved. But it it just doesn't have that that juice that it originally had. Well, there was a grudge aspect to that first yes, match. Yes, for mean, sure. It's Tiger versus Phil. So that's that's the watching power. That's the staying power. I'm going to watch that for six hours, ten hours. Yeah. I wish that they played every single night. Um, I think that they've lost that a little bit. They're trying to. I don't know what they're trying to really accomplish with it. Like I I I I struggled with like why are we watching this? Like I was sitting there being like, what's the reason? Is it just to watch them hit golf shots, or are we supposed to like root for a winner? They really have lost their appeal, the appeal of like why we're t- tuning in. Now, if you have two TVs set up, like I, I was watching the Islanders on one screen and I had that on the other one, it wasn't that bad. I was yeah. you got to watch some cool shots. Like the, Lexi Thompson was driving the green, like it was fuck, it was cool. Like I mean, it was obvious. We played the park with Grant Horvat. It was awesome to just see that place. Um, lit up. I enjoyed that aspect of it. I thought they hit some cool shots, but if I had the volume on and I was like listening to that for four hours, I probably would have drove myself insane. So yeah, I think they're losing the appeal of why are we watching it? You have to attack that as like a content creator. That's what they're becoming. They're on primetime TV and they're trying to change the game of golf. They have to look at it as though they're a content creator. Like why? Just like we do, where it's like what video would be like, like people actually want to watch this when we get rory in a video or we get tiger woods we're like what's the best idea that we can come up with that people will actually find this interesting as opposed to just them just hitting golf shots we argue about that all the time and they just can't figure it out i guess well riggs's latest series hater is a perfect example why am i right. watching this it's because right. this guy has a very public golf game and there's a bunch of people who shit on it now what if you put that person who's shitting on the guy who has a public golf game against the guy that's why you watch and that yeah. the the match with the other night on Monday had had none of that. Like you're saying, that's a great point. Although I will say, like when they did the Bryson and Brooks one, they fucked that one up too because they did it too late. They they it's like oh. when you get all the sponsorships involved, it's like we can't do it until down the line. And by the time you actually do it, that beef was over. You have to do it in the moment. They have to capture it, and they have not been able to do that. Yeah, like they could have honestly as as simple as it sounds, just done like the women against the men, just be like who. You know, can the LPGA women compete and beat yep. Rory and Max Homa? Yeah, and such gonna, a better video. You know, they're going to play from the appropriate T differences and let's see who fucking wins. And like, yep. I, that's like there's a storyline. And I, I agree with you. They've lost it. And what they, you know, they have this infatuation with doing it live. And to your point, if you're going to try to do the entertaining aspect of golf, like if you just did a live stream of four hours of one of our matches like it's just not gonna be as good minute to minute as when we can edit it into a fucking 40 minute video you put the best stuff in you put the graphics in you know how to crescendo it and build it and do a storyline that you know has its peaks and valleys and and you know what you're working with when it's live like that you know like it's hard to make golf that entertaining when they have 75 people on the weekend that they get to cut to whenever they want now they've got four that are all on the same time you know frame so it's like what what would help like honestly if they just had two groups out there so that at any time you could cut to someone hitting a shot but like god when you're right that downtime danny and like i felt catherine tapping kept rory kept winning holes so he would be the guy that they would interview on the green and you could tell rory was just like i don't know what else to say you keep interviewing me after every hole being like (laughs) Uh, all right, Rory, you won that hole. What were you able to do special there? And he's like, you know, it's just a beautiful night out here. This is awesome. Man. This is so fun. Like, uh, and luckily, I was just able to hit a good shot there. And she's like, all right, good luck on the next hole. And then they yeah. just kept doing that. Dude. You could tell Rory's like, dude, what was I that shoulder fucking- shrug? He was moving his hood, but it looked like a twitch. 
Are you sure? Yeah. I think so. I think he put her arm good. on the back and he went. Wah. I thought he was trying to move his hood to the back. That's what, what I, I thought. thought. Too. There is yeah. two ways of looking at it. For sure. <laughs> there but, are. But I, 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 I would say, that. like, would Roy, like, I, I don't think Roy would be like, don't <laughs> touch me. That would be wild if he did that. Yeah. Bubba Watson, but if they, did a little... like a, if they did, like, a Rory versus Brooks matchup, like a, grug, a grudge match, two best players of their generation, something like that, like, there's there's got to be a, a storyline. And Dude, I think right. one of the reasons why the Tiger Phil one was so good is they were both trying. They were both, like, locked in, doing what they it, do best. Which is play golf really fucking well. What every conversation we have about the sport of golf boils down to on this podcast, PJ Tour Live, the match, our videos, whatever. Golf, this is the reality, isn't at the NFL. It's not the NBA. It's not constant action where you can do it. What you have to do in each of these scenarios is find a way to distill the best parts. For the PJ Tour versus Live thing, it's we got to have one tour where everybody plays together. For the match, you got to film it, edit it, put it down. For Breaking 90, for Hater, for Fixing Frankie, for all these things, you just take the best parts and you put it on there. If you let it lag and if you show all four hours of a golf round, it's just not going to work. Or if you split the talent, it's just not going to work. With golf, you have to take the best parts and show people that. If you try to show them everything or if you try to split the talent, it's not going to fucking work. Yeah, and I remember with the Tiger Phil match, there was so much because you know you got to take yourself back six years ago, and this stuff was relatively unheard of. And their big hype was like, they're gonna we're gonna talk shit to each other, we're gonna have little like side bets, and you're like, fuck yeah. And then you're like, do you imagine like Tiger Woods is gonna just talk shit to Phil for four hours straight? That would be crazy. What is he a stand up comedian who's just gonna <laughs> roast Phil for four hours? Like, right. No, he has like a couple chirps over a four hour period. And that gets a little bit of highlights and it gets on social. But like, you know, I remember down the back nine when like Tiger ended up holding that one from off the green on 17 at Shadow Creek. And there was a little bit of juice there. But people were like, yeah, on the back nine, Tiger and Phil got pretty quiet. And it's like, no shit. They're just trying to defeat the other guy and focus on playing golf. That's like what they do. They're not just going to walk around, like I said, with a microphone. It's not open mic night at Shadow Creek. It's like they're golfers. That's what they do. And so that part of it is it's just not made for live with the current format it needs a storyline you need some reason for them to actually be playing and then they're like just playing for charity which charity's great but like you, they clearly don't care about the shots as much if the money's just being donated in somebody's name to like a foundation instead of playing you know so it's just yeah, i don't know I mean, you don't we know don't, exactly we're not going to be the, we're not going to be the anti charity podcast but it is that you got to have these guys playing for their own money that's what yeah. makes it competitive the Club Pro guy tweeted something. He was like, I want to see Lexi Thompson putt for 600K for herself, not for some random kid. <laughs> you know I mean? It's true. That's it going to make them more into it. But that's what makes it. And Riggs and I were, were texting about this a little bit. I am concerned about the DGL situation. That's still going to happen. The indoor simulator uh, week. Yeah. Because, because the, the, there's no, they're not even really hitting. I mean, they're hitting golf shots, but not into the night. You're not going to see tracers. You're not going to see. So you're, they are going to rely on these people as personalities. That personality has to carry that broadcast. And I'm a little concerned about how it's going to go. Yeah, but it's going to be a condensed version of golf, which is exactly what we were just saying. Like, at least they're going to keep it to like around the green and there's going to be maybe trick shot aspects. At least it's yeah, different than just like getting in a cart and talking about the shot. Like there's, there's going to be a like, tiger. You hit the shot over this bunker and then Rory, can you match? And hopefully it's like a quick pace. We get to see yeah. the best golfers pull off the best skills but aside from like they have to nail that I, I agree with you where it's like if you're just going to make it the match into a simulator like let's just end that now like <laughs> we don't no one needs to see that but if you can if you can do fast pace like come on yeah. to a metronome make it 130 like real quick i need, gotta, I need that thing to be you yes. need quick dude that's 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 a lesson for us that's a lesson for whoever puts these matches on that's a lesson for the tgl like if we listen we love golf we host a golf podcast. We do golf videos. We play golf in our downtime. We want this shit to be a thing people like. Like, and to do that, it's gotta it's gotta be clip. You can't film four hour rounds and put out four hour rounds. You can't do it. And it's gotta be quick so that then when there is a big moment, you can let the big moment breathe. Like when Trent, when you had your moment on the eighteen T and breaking ninety, right? It's like it's quick. You're bopping up. There's a couple big moments where you had some good scores but you're kind of moving through and then it builds to this moment where 
you get the dramatic music. You get a couple different angles. Trent's waggling on the tee. He's standing there for too long. You're like, what the fuck? And like, you're able to build up to these moments. Whereas when it's live and you don't know, and there's only, it's just like the whole thing. Again, it's almost, it just kind of slugged along and it was awkward. You almost like couldn't wait for it to be over, which is not an ideal thing when you're watching something like that. So, uh, so yeah, I, uh, again, on the, on the overall, it's, it's good that this stuff is existing and people are trying stuff. I like that. Like, you know, you got these four uh, stars of golf that are willing to be out there doing it. They raise a bunch of money for charity. They showcase the park. It's cool, but the actual product has got to be tweaked or it's just not going to last um, is the way I look at it. Uh, okay. Let's do a little from the gallery and then we'll do closest to the pin and then we'll get the hell out of here uh, from the gallery. We got a bunch of good submissions. So big thanks to everybody for play at parcel sports.com is the email. We got like a whole new crop of submissions over the last uh, 48 hours since we did the last show. So again, appreciate that. Um, From the gallery is brought to you by our great friends at TaylorMade Golf. I cannot reiterate enough how great the QI10, QI10 Max, QI10 LS, how great um, these golf clubs are. You go to TaylorMadeGolf.com and check them out. If you have not, TaylorMade had with the new driver like a week after launching just all three of the new drivers. There's three different models of QI10. All three of them won. Tommy Fleetwood, Rory McIlroy, Nelly Corda using all three models. That's like never happened before. Uh, the reviews are insane on this thing. The QI-10, 10K inertia. You've seen the super slow-mo when you zoom in. If you hit this thing off the toe, the club barely even moves, whereas a traditional club wobbles like you wouldn't believe, like it's about to fall off the planet. Uh, that's the 10K inertia. That's what they figured out with this bad boy. So it's forgiving. It goes far. Rory, you watched him in the match that we were just talking about absolutely piping drives all over the place with this thing so qi10 qi10 max qi10 ls we love this club all right um taylormadegolf.com go check it out if you have not already you can learn a lot about it uh i've got a great a great little um i i would call it from tom from the uk submitted what i would call a laundry list of questions for america is basically <laughs> what he submitted. Okay. And it would be kind of a failure of our international duty not to address these questions. He sent a list of 10 questions from the UK, and he just kind of wants to know what's going on in America and with Americans. His first one, he says, in the UK, we get 25 days holiday entitlement from work plus eight public holidays. How does this compare to the US? How do you guys survive on so few? Maybe, we're maybe not the best people to ask this question, I feel like, but well, for, fair. What standard? 14, I think, or, or two weeks, maybe? A couple two weeks, weeks of vacation? Yeah. Two weeks would be like 10 days. You know, I think if you're at a place for a little longer, you get to three or four weeks, maybe, which, again, if we're talking weekdays, um, 25 days holiday plus eight public holidays, that, that feels like a, an amazing amount. Is that true? I think that is an amazing amount. I mean... I, like I said, like we, I've never really been in that world. I was working at the fucking restaurant, and then I came to here. So I've never really had any sort of. It's always just been you work and you work, and and whenever you're off, you're off. Like there was never a guy telling me like you had to come in or whatever. So, but what like Hannah, she works in um in like the, in the medical field, and that's a huge conversation of like days yeah. you get off, and I mean just all that stuff is a huge huge debate of they're not getting nearly enough um like holidays and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah I, I really, think, I'm not the person. I think when to I worked in an office like that for a couple of years before I went crazy and decided to do something else, I think you start out with like 10 to 15 regular off days. And then as the months go by, you accrue like, you know, whatever amount. So the longer you're there, the more you have, but I don't 25 and eight seems like way more than the standard in America. I would imagine. Yeah, my answer would be that's why we're number one, baby. I like, was going to say that too. Taking fucking you vacation, want a on every corner, corner of, you know, Europe, jumping on trains and shit. We're fucking working. We're, you know, what I mean, we got productivity through the roof over here. We're building empires. So, you know, that would kind of be my answer. You guys are welcome. You're over there safe. Like we're out here, <laughs> kind of policing the world and growing the biggest companies and and doing what Americans do. So we're eating more food. We're just kind of that's what we do. Right. So. We're sitting, Good we're working, you the, ob the obesity rates are through the roof, but it's because we're <laughs> sitting and we're working. We are just sitting and working, man. We're pounding Taco we're... Bell and McDonald's while we hammer through Excel spreadsheets and dominate the world. That's just what we're doing. Uh, 
a couple of questions here that weren't great. Fourth one, why do American sports fans hate ties? Why does every single match you guys do have to end in a playoff or an overtime? I will say I went to the to the game that Messi played, the Galaxy Messi game uh, on Sunday, and it was a 1-1 tie, and it was kind of a nice I, – I kind of didn't hate leaving the stadium. Everyone was kind of like, oh, that was a nice show. Well, the you National know? Football well, that's League how has an empire ties, slips through your fingers. Is that well, the National Football away? League has ties during the regular season, and it's obviously one of the biggest leagues. Maybe I mean it's definitely the biggest. It's league It's hard in America, to get so. to though. Like how many ties are there in an NFL season? They they there's set a couple it up. Of year. Are there are a couple. They set it up. I think so. There's less than five. I I am have been on record that they need to bring back the tie in hockey. I'm sick of the fucking shootout. I would love to leave an arena being like both teams didn't earn that second point. They both get a point. And we move on like we watched a really good. Ho- if you're not going to extend that three on three to 10 minutes so that there's more endings before a fucking exhibition skills competition to end an amazing game. Like you got the Bruins versus the Maple Leafs and it's one one and both goalies are fucking in the game. And you're like, you're, you're, you're they're clanging and banging for 60 minutes plus five in the overtime. And then all of a sudden you just have like posture knock just like shooting on. The, you know, what? it's just like. It's a breakaway fest. I mean, come on, it's so stupid. So when did they get I've rid of ties? And when did they get rid of ties in hockey? Was that a they thing just for introduced? A yeah, I would it say, was I don't uh, know, twenty years ago. Lockout, yeah, after the lockout in like whatever that was, two thousand seven, two thousand six, I think. Two thousand six. They uh, they came back <laughs> with a bunch of new rules. You weren't allowed to clutch and grab as much. They're trying to get more offense, and they introduced the shootout. So it's probably been yeah, eighteen years or whatever it's been. I'm kind of I'm sick of it. it. Was it was a cool novelty at first for sure. And it, they were trying to get more fans into the game and shootouts deliver a lot of clips and all that. I'm kind of with you. I don't know that like the shootout clips do it for them anymore. You've kind of seen one of them. You've seen all of them at this point in terms of the shootout goals and somebody winning. So I'm kind of with you. I kind of miss the days of just tying. Like, And to Dan's point, you can kind of walk out of the rink that night and be like, that was a great hard fought. It's a great Nothing game. wrong with that. The yeah. other thing that I would say is like, if you want to, if you want to have like a winner, quote unquote, in the game of hockey, do the shootout. But, both teams still get one point and that shootout win goes into its own category so that if two teams are tied in the standings, you have like six shootout wins and then that would be over. And you know what I'm saying? Like at least there's, yeah. it's, it's the tiebreaker category. And at least the fans get to watch like some sort of ending. And there is, I don't know. I, that, that's kind of like stupid, but I just, I hate them. Maybe because the Islanders have always been horrific at them. And I just, I, I watch them play a good team game and then they just are horrible when it comes to the skills part yeah so that that i wish we would go the uk route i'm fi- i'm fa- i'm a fan of ties there you go tom we're we're actually more pro tie than you would imagine us americans yeah uh how annoying is it having to tip everyone for doing everything in the uk oh. the only people who get tips are waiters and restaurants this has it's getting changed. out of control. This it's has, it's insane. I and it's getting out of control. It's changed for sure. And like just within the last eighteen months, I would say it's getting yes. out of control. And I, it's just I don't understand. And I come from the restaurant business, and I understand that that is where it really originates. And it's like it, the restaurant owners are able to have like less wages so then basically you're putting it onto the customer to pay the to pay the wait step but it's a tough business so it's like you can't have restaurants paying out these insane wages for all these workers or else they wouldn't have none it works in that setting but like you go to an I, I, all my references are islanders but you go to an islander game and you go up to this fucking bar and they're they're just pushing out these huge bottles of beer there's really no service there. they're just handing it to you and every single time you put your credit card in. The first option is 20%, 22%, 24%. It's like they don't even give you. And you're looking at it. You're like, I'm, I'm, I'm paying $20 for this tall boy beer at a hockey game. And now I've got to give you an extra like $3 or whatever it may be. I don't know what the math is. But like you tur- it's out of control. Every time I go up there, I got to give you another one, another one, another one. And they don't give you any option. What are you going to hit the other and then they're, zero? Oh, they're staring right at you. Oh, that's if, if if you could just answer some of the questions, um, you go to CVS. If you could just answer some of the questions right here, like I'm buying fucking that, Tums and fucking bro. like lactate. So I don't shit my pants. I got to tip you for this, bro. But it works, at least for me, because they're preying on my niceness. They're just like, are you yeah. gonna, are you willing to say I'm not giving this person any money as they stare at you? And it's it's it's. I don't know what to do. Like when I get coffee in the morning, 
twenty percent for the coffee, and I'm like, every yep. time. I, I, what every am I supposed time. to do? Dude, I it takes away the, the the hard work, the the server and the bar, like the, the people at restaurants that are actually like grinding on on serving you. You're giving them twenty percent, so all of a sudden, I got to give the person just handing me one coffee twenty percent. I I might as well, I, I might I might I might as well be giving the 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 waiter or the waitress. 60% then, if you're going to talk about the amount of work that went into my experience. Yeah, and we've, I think, Frankie, you and I have talked about this. If we're going to start tipping people, if we're going to start tipping everybody, we got to start tipping uh, flight attendants. The flight oh. attendants do so much work. Bro, they take this little cart 30,000 oh. feet above the earth, and they are just... Em. And they're and they're just rolling this little thing. Water, orange juice, coffee, tea for everybody snacks. on the flight. Snacks. And they come back again before you land. And Dude, they we're grab just your giving trash. them nothing. Got, like people blowing their nose into napkins and they just grab them and put them in their fucking trash thing. Like they're they're doing everything. If, if I'm they never get tipped. If I'm tipping the nope. barista at Starbucks, which I at the end of the day, fine. I I love coffee so much. If you're gonna give me my coffee and I gotta tip you a dollar fifteen for whatever you give me my coffee. Fine, if that's where we're gonna be living in, I'll do it. But I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna cost myself more money and say, then we gotta start tipping flight attendants because they might be the hardest working people in this country. Tip the fucking crew. Tip the guys flying the thing. Ah. I mean, if we want to start talking about things that deserve tips, it's like if you're gonna save my life and fly me through the air, I'm gonna throw you five bucks. I gotta throw five bucks to the lady giving me a fucking pack of condoms or something. I mean, come on, what's happening over here? <laughs> Can we she saved tip? She saves you a lot of money. That woman who gave yeah, you those condoms. Yeah, true. She <laughs> saved you point. a lot of money. That's a good point. It's just <laughs> like it's it's such a weird thing to get angry about because you're you're spreading the wealth and you're stimulating the economy. And I get it. Like you're just giving out more money to people. You're spreading it around. But it's just gotten out of control. It's the world has gotten out of control with the prices. It really has. And there's just no going back. We're like on this never ending spinning into the abyss cycle. And I just don't see an end. Like I went to, I mean, I want, I want to talk about this. I went to the Red Lobster last night. Oh, for the first time in my life. First what? time in my life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I just had, fuck, a, this, I had an, fuck the tip conversation. I want to talk about well, Red Lobster. At the end of it, at the end of it, they give you the credit card thing and she's just holding it right there. And she's like, please. Please mm -hmm. tip me right there. And you're just like, I'm, of course, I'm going to hit the biggest one, and 25%. But, and she looks at it and she goes, yeah, that went through. Thank you very much. It's just like, that's not the way this is supposed to work. Also, I want to make fun, sure, man. like, I, I'm stuck on the coffee thing because that's just what I do every day. Is that is that tip that I give going to the person or is it just going to Starbucks corporate? Like, who is who that? Knows? Who is that going to? How do they, like, who knows? I, that's the part I also don't understand. But it's like, again, I'm going to keep doing it because I'm a sucker and I'm too nice. And I'm just going to be like, take it. It is stimulating the economy. I'm, you know, it's not to the point where I can't pay my rent now. This, these tips at, at Starbucks and wherever you're going, isn't putting me on the street. It has just gotten out of hand. I bet like if they ever do a study, which they have to like, how much more money are these companies making with the percentages of these people who are just putting 20, 25% when it's shoved in their face at the end of the day, it's going to be billions of dollars of extra revenue that they are yes. getting. And yeah. if it helps the economy, fine. Again, I'm I'm not so hard out that I'm going to be like, you know, sucking dick on the side for money, but it's like... <laughs> yeah, but, but when did it become like any time that... Like, I feel like one of the most common things in the world is how to like save money. And now it's like if you're at all trying to save money, you're just not in, included and you don't want to be stimulating the economy. It's like, well, no, I just like... I'm trying not to just endlessly spend extra money all of the time. Like 15 times right. a day, this happens where you just right. have to give money and they're like, well, you can afford it. It's like, well, I'm okay. That's that. Right. Doesn't have to do with anything. I don't, if I walk by a person on the sidewalk, I, I just get to like, do I just have to hand them five bucks for not murdering me and being like, thanks for not murdering me. That's like, okay, here's five bucks. And you it's just gotten out giving of control, out, man. I, it doesn't make any fucking sense. You're just giving out money all the time. So, I want to hear about uh, Red Lobster. Me too. What, uh, what? Well, I just had enough of it. Like, I don't, I, I, I don't know if it's because I grew up in the restaurant and we just never really went to like the fast food chains. Even though Long Island seems to be, uh, I guess is, that's called. That's no, not a fast food chain. It's just a chain, right? It's, it's just a, a, sit -down it's a chain, chain restaurant. Yeah, it's a chain restaurant. Um, but you know, there was like the TGI Fridays and stuff. Like me and my dad would go after like a sporting event or whatever. We love Texas Roadhouse. Like I have gone to a couple of them, but there's a list 
that I never really got to. Never went to an Olive Garden, and I will never step foot in one. I will never step Come foot on, in one. dude. It's just sacrilegious. My dad That's would crazy. never look at me the Why? same. It's, it's just like anti-Italian I don't know. Food? It's just, no, it's not anti-Italian food. It's just like if you have a choice that day, go to, go to, go to daddy's place. You know, one time on this, on this floating I might rock sneak in the a lunch in there. You get I might one sneak chance a lunch in this there. thing. What's one Olive Garden visit going to do? I might sneak do it a for lunch Nate, in, but do it for yeah, Nate. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I respect my dad more than Nate, and I love Nate, but like I don't know. I just I there's respect something about your dad too, but I, I yeah, but I'll he's just like Olive he hates Garden. Olive Garden. He hates the idea of Olive Garden. Like they get their shit in like corporate packaging, and they send the breadsticks in boxes, and everything's a carbon copy. He's like, I work. For, this is my fucking industry. Like I work. I I, I get it. it. I could see a little bit of why he fucking hates the the. You know, it's like it's like Walmart coming in, knocking down a, a, the the mom and pop shop. He hates it. I get it. Um, so so I'm gonna stand pat on, on breadsticks are uh, good though. I even if I've good. heard, I've heard, I heard oh, the unlimited frozen the salads and the breadsticks. I heard they're good. I heard they're really good. Um, give you water. So it's great. Red Robin was Free on water. there. Yeah. I never gone to a Red Robin. I think it's like cheeseburgers. Yeah, yeah. Burger Red Robin. Then I've then I've never ever, and we have a bunch of them, and they always I always see them. I've never been to a Red Lobster. I don't know how. I love seafood. I love crab legs. I love lobster. I love shrimp. I love endless shrimp. I love popcorn shrimp. I love coleslaw. I love Pepsi products. I love it all. <laughs> so I finally said, you know what? I've had enough, and I want to. I want to go to a Red Lobster. And I made a nice. We, I brought my sister in law, brother in law, with me, and we made a nice date night out of it. And we were. They were so excited to uh, share this experience with me. I had. No idea what I was in for. I tweeted it out yesterday. It got crazy traction on Instagram and Twitter. I'm talking quarter of a million people saw that tweet of me going to Red Lobster, and every single one of them wanted to give their little take. Some people hated it. Some people love it. Some people say it's the middle of the road. The one thing I heard about were these Cheddar Bay biscuits. And let me tell you something about these Cheddar Bay biscuits, brother. I'm team bread over biscuit i think i've i've gotten into a debate about this yeah. with people at barstool sports i've always said a biscuit is just a a drier less appetizing piece of of bread than like a nice juicy italian bread or or whatever if you have a loaf of bread and you have a biscuit i'm taking the loaf of bread every single day over a biscuit biscuits are dry and they have no taste to them i hate biscuits so i went into this with kind of a negative attitude I opened up the lit. They put, they put, you sit down and the biscuits are already there. And they put this little napkin over the biscuit. And you can kind of see it peering out at you. And you're like, that looks different than anything I've ever seen before. Cause it has this glaze of like a cheddar top that has been burnt and, Mm. and, and sauteed over this fucking piece of bread. Right. So I unveil this cheddar bay biscuit. I take both ends of the tissue paper and I just slowly open it up. And it looks like, Heaven, a movie scene where it's like glowing onto my face. I think I heard the choir music go, ah, yeah. and I literally grabbed one. I inspected it. I looked it up and down. I looked it sideways. I turned it around and I took my first bite of that cheddar bay biscuit. Yeah. Welcome to brother, America, baby. Brother, I felt it, man. I felt it in my ball sack, dude. It changed. It honestly changed my life. I swear. That I think that's the best piece of like bread I've ever had in my entire life. Mm. I don't know what they're doing at Red Lobster. I don't know where that's coming from. I don't know how they replicate it because I had six, right? And all six of them <laughs> were fucking good. Now, yeah. did I feel it later on in the night? Oh, yeah. I, I texted our group chat. I said, I'm feeling those biscuits right now. But you know what? They're worth it. They are so worth it. They're salty, they're cheesy. They're they're moist. Woo! If Tom from the UK is still listening, this is America, oh. baby. All right, this right oh. here, Cheddar Bay biscuits at Red Lobster. Can't believe you went thirty years in this country and didn't have. He even took a picture of it. He's showing it right now. If and I can't believe you went thirty years before you tried a Cheddar Bay biscuit. But I'm glad oh. you experienced it. They really are so 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 good. It kind of looks like a Levain chocolate chip cookie with the with the oh, consistency. You know how else, thick it is. Everyone is. Are we now Red Lobster? Are we now a group of people who have all been to Red Lobster? Danny Riggs. I've, I I never grew up eating shellfish, so I've never been to Red Lobster. Fuck. Wow. Yeah. You got to go for the wow. biscuits, though, Danny. 
Yeah, I'll go for the biscuits. We'll I guess take I'll you and get biscuits. biscuits together. Yeah. The biscuits are so good. The meal was great. I got like this feast where you got a lobster tail, you got a crab leg, I got linguine shrimp Alfredo. <laughs> it was like oh. five different things, dude. It was fucking. I, she, the, the waitress asked me, what would you like? I said, I want the red lobster feast, please. <laughs> <laughs> said. And uh, everyone else got the you shrimp, the shrimp, you, shrimp your way, and you can get a bit different variations of shrimps and you can get popcorn shrimp and cocktail sauce and you see the lobsters when you walk in and i'll give you up and this we we are not sponsored by red lobster by the way if they want to reach out i'll be, gladly yeah. i'll ho- i'll host the fucking podcast from the red lobster when you walk the one in deer park long island is like to dream for it's got shiplap it had an outdoor like oh, wow. area that dude i was well i want to tell you the one in Cedar rapids iowa is also shiplapped oh no the, <laughs> This thing is incredibly new. Like I'm talking, you. It's like a chip. I think go it's part of experience. the aesthetic, though. Is what I'm saying is like they yeah. plopped one in Cedar Rapids next to Lindale Mall, and it's shiplapped. Like that's okay. the thing. Okay. But is I it beautifully yeah. bright and white and like brand new looking. I mean, I mean this, it's been there for the people I was years, with were but... like this. The people I was with was like this is the nicest Red Lobster they've ever seen. I don't know what they did with this one. They threw a little extra coin in. It's got an outdoor area where the garage doors open up and go out into a field. It's crazy. There's outdoor seating at this Red Lobster. <laughs> I love that how fired up you are about Red Lobster. This is making me happy. So I enjoyed it, man. It was that reveal. There was something about taking that paper towel and opening them up because they hide them from you when they when they bring them over. They really they keep it's them a, warm. It's a show. No, it's a show. They know what it's about. Yeah, true. And uh, little did they know that that was my first experience. And she kind of winked at me the waitress. She's like, "You want another one?" I said, "Yeah, I want another basket." I uh, treated you. Tri- Trent, do you guys have Lion's Choice back home? No, Lion's Choice. No. Oh, it's roast beef. Oh, it's the best chain roast beef I've ever had. You ever mm. get? You ever? You ever anywhere? And, and you? I don't know exactly where all they have them. It's pretty Midwestern, obviously St. Louis. It might just be mostly the St. Louis, but you ever get like a Lion's Choice? You get a couple roast beef sandwiches, some fr- Oh, oh, it's unbelievably good. But Red Lobster slaps. There's, There's something to oh, be said. Good. That's, that's the point I've always made about those, like people shit on them. I'm obviously a Midwest guy, and they're like, oh, all you eat is Applebee's and Red Lobster and Chili's. There's a reason there's a million, there's millions of these things. Yep. Like, mm-hmm. yep. I, I get that it's like all the same, but there people go there because it's like, oh, it's reliable. You know what you're going to get. You're going to get Cheddar Bay Biscuits. You're going to get Shrimp Linguini. You're going to get Endless Shrimp. You're going to get a platter. Like, it's reliable and consistent, and they are. there are millions of them across the country. Yeah, you're going to walk in. It's going to cost you like 20 bucks. It's yeah. going to come out in five minutes, and it's going to be fucking delicious every single time. Delicious. It was delicious. You know what you're going to get. And there's something about the fountain sodas at these places. They're just oh, different. Yeah. It's like yeah. Mr. Coca-Cola or Mr. Pepsi's pissing it right out of his own dick. It's yes. like it's coming straight from the source. It's coming straight from the source. There's no there's no hoopla going on. There's no RC Cola and all of these like off, off, like the off-brand ones. It's straight pepsi co you know what i mean yeah oh, it's yeah. that fucking it's that sugar baby it's that and i loved it. oh and then the desserts the brownies and the whole deal it's just fucking phenomenal it was phenomenal i'm, I'm uh, thrilled that you feel that way i really am. oh Me too oily though like your hands with the biscuits if you don't have oh, if yeah. you don't have if you don't have paper towels on hand wow wipe it on your shirt dude get really yeah i guess so it's yeah it was great all right uh closest to the pen time dan yeah let's do it we'll we'll make it quick i know i know we're we're gone a little long here so we'll make it quick all right uh real quick hold on closest to the pen brought to you by fireball whiskey we love fireball whiskey everybody knows that fireball 50 milliliter shooters a perfect shot for the golf course if you're feeling like up in the ante on the course this weekend make sure you grab the new fireball birdie shot club it is literally a golf club filled with fireball nips Fireball's iconic cinnamon flavor taste fire. That's true. Goes down easy. Also true. Making it the ultimate crowd pleaser. Fireball is the birdie shot of golf. It's the number one shot in the USA. Been there before. The beverage cart rolls around. Maybe you brought some on your, uh, you know, yourself and you don't need them. Maybe you're uh, excited for the beverage cart to roll up. You grab a handful of the fireball shooters. You pop them back. You can just throw them out. You don't need glassware. You don't need chaser. You don't need any of that stuff. So, Fireball, go get some Fireball for this weekend. 
All right. Fireball Whiskey was the ch- uh, chief sponsor of Side Gig, which we uh, filmed last week with Joel Damon. Uh, did some birdie shots when Joel made birdies, and there were multiple shots. I'll leave it at that. I think we're I think we're launching that Wednesday, the same day as the Netflix show, to try and just draft off that show. Okay. Do you Alex, want a you standings wanna... update? Yeah, I'll do a standings yes, update. Yes, or a little bit that. of last week, too. Yeah. So last week, uh, the Tiger question is TBD. So uh, first one was goal scored by the Blues against the Islanders on oh, Thursday. fuck off. Uh, Frank, you want to tell us what the score was in that game? It was four nothing. Four nothing. Okay, so we all had four five nothing. or three. So everyone split that one. Oh, nice. Todd. Nice. Um, second okay. one. Number of tweets from Dave on Saturday and Sunday about Miss Peaches. Oh. There were only two. So wow. Um, Trent. Discipline. Yeah, Trent and Dan both had four, so they were the closest Let's on that. Let's go. And then the winning scored a par at Mexico Open, nineteen under. Trent won at eighteen under. So. Nice week, Trent. Trent. Right now we have Trent and Dan tied at the top with 13, then Riggs with 12, Frankie with 6, myself with 4. Okay. All right. Okay. Hot. The first question for this week, and not including ties, what will Anthony Kim finish in Live Jetta? There are 54, 54 players in the field, which wasn't it 48 for a while? They're just adding guys. Uh, so it's 54 guys in the field. What will his number be? Forget the T. What will his finish be? We're talking place, not score. Place, not score. Okay. 54 guys. Oh, I got to bring my phone up, and I uh, didn't know what I was doing there. Oh, I just put it in my buddy's group chat. Okay. <laughs> They're going to be like, what? They're going to be like, what is that? All right, we're waiting. I think we're good. We're in, right? Right, Bushy? We're, we're all in. in. Yep. Uh, pretty similar couple here. Riggs and myself, 43. Dan, Jesus. 44. Frankie, 22. Trent, 29. I think if he finishes twenty second, it's that's a big success. I wanted to Huge put success. I wanted to put yeah. one. big success. I wanted to put one really bad because <laughs> yeah. at this point, if we're making it up as we go as the Live Golf Tour, let's turn into WWE and just give Anthony Kim the win. Like, what <laughs> yeah. the fuck are we doing? What are yeah. we doing? Rom just Rom just has to nine putt the last hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If he finishes twenty two or even twenty nine, I think people are fired up about Anthony Kim. Yeah, yeah. totally. He beats half totally. the field after not playing for twenty for twelve years. God, twelve right. years. Second question: On Monday is the Q at Myrtle Beach. Okay, sixteen guys for one spot in a PGA Tour event. Eight creators, eight aspiring pros. <clears throat> what will the win? So only one. The guy who wins the qualifier gets into the Myrtle Beach Classic. What will the winning score in relation to par be? Okay, and and for some context here, you know, there's guys like myself. There's guys like you know, Gran and my. He's, but they're also legitimate tour play i mean this guy matt atkins who's playing monday into mexico last week and shot you know shot like eight under in the monday qualifier to get it so i actually don't think that a youtuber is going to end up playing in this tour event because i think one of the like so it'd be an insane guys. win for youtube golf if that happened but it's, i wonder if well, they, like, are they considering didn't the want brian brothers are they considering the brian brothers as like a youtube golfer well it's just george oh it's just george yeah but he's he good are they... yeah he's really he's... good he made a cut yeah but... cutting him yeah so I wouldn't. Cons- I mean, they're doing great stuff on YouTube, but I wouldn't consider that like an influencer. That's like not fair. <laughs> That's yeah. It's right. like it's almost like they went kind of went halfway. It's like if if you want it, you should just like make it like six guys who've never played in a fucking professional anything. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. yeah. I that think was probably an easier sell with the tour though to have like I think actual. So too. Yeah. Right, because they think they know the result, which you need. We need a YouTuber to step up and win this thing danny rap i think george is Damn. selling himself short like not putting him as in the in in the aspiring pro golfer category right it's like not oh. a knock on him it's almost like dude you're so fucking good go like go become a professional i mean you can still film it and put it on youtube but don't Isn't act that like when, you're like, like damn Rappaport, martian no way i mean like the martian won the oscar for like best comedy yeah, or something it's and, exactly and right <laughs> you're, like, you're just well. trying to fit into some sort of category it's like dude you are you are you're a really yeah. good golfer it's really nine it it's really nine aspiring golf professional golfers and seven youtubers yeah right yeah. yeah all right are we in yep everyone's in and if there's if there's a if there's a tie in this answer the tiebreaker is what will dan Rappaport shoot so what do we have our answers in what are what are we looking at bush we're looking at Riggs five under frankie six under Trent five under, Dan six under, myself six under. Yeah, we are just simpatico. We are. Uh, all right. Okay. So moving on. I saw this one in our. I thought this was a very interesting question. It's gonna. It's not gonna be answered anytime soon. So, but we have a few of those. What will the next non-major PGA Tour event be 
that John Rom plays in. Oh wow! So the Players Championship would count. Anything that's not a major. The answer could be never happens ever again. I find that hard to believe. What will be the next PGA Tour event non-major that John? And I feel like Rom is the perfect example because great player. No one hates him. Like if if anyone's getting back in events, it's John Rom. Is this year two or just the event? No, this is the event. You got to say just the, the event. event. Okay. Well, and the year. Yes, the year. The okay. year and the event. Okay. So you could say twenty twenty. You know, if you thought it was next week, you'd say twenty twenty four Bay Hit whatever. Wow. Wow. This is the, this is really the question on everybody's mind in terms of the golf world. This could, this could potentially be a uh, long one for Alex Bush to have to track down. Alex Bush might. I got a few of those. I got some job security here. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. I was going to say Alex we Bush. Can't get rid of Alex can't Bush leave until <laughs> he's got the Excel spreadsheet of closest to the pin, so he's got to You're not getting around. it. Right. I just wrote it down and forgot to text it. Sorry. I actually do the same thing. <laughs> I was just like, what are we waiting for? Fuck. All right. I don't know. It, well, it's an impossible question, but it's a good one. Okay, everybody in? All right. We are all in. Dan Rapport, 2025 players. Riggs, wow. 2026 waste management. Trent, 2025 memorial. Myself, 2026 memorial. Frankie, wow. 2025 waste. Okay. My thing is, they should just drop the band. Like, if, if you've won a major, you're eligible to play in th- these signature events. And then it would just, like, guys would come back and it would be fucking electric. I, you know, I understand that there's a lot of complications with the membership and stuff, but, like, if they want to make the players into a major, which they, they do, why not just invite guys who have won majors in the past, like in the you know past whatever years? I feel like they could do that. Mm. I think live guys are going to play well again in majors because they have some of the best players that are in golf on their tour. And I do think that this conversation is going to ramp up even more than it is now. By the end of this year, you're going to have some sort of solution as to like what what are we doing with professional golf? If John Rahm's winning majors every single time he plays and dj's finishing top 10 and brooks is fucking it's like let's just get these guys in all these events at some point we have to so i 2025 i think will be a very very combined season of golf i'm stunned the conversation didn't go that way when rom signed initially like i thought that I was going to be the thing that well, was it's because like, he's exempt for the next five years into the majors but not you know right but with the tour it's like all right like I, like we don't the thing is is we have no idea where these talks are they're so behind closed doors that it's... I've got a little bit of insight. Please. The DOJ, is, it, it, they are running into a ton of regulatory uh, roadblocks. I think that even if both sides really want to do a deal right now, I think it is extremely complicated, especially in an election year. I think it's just like they're not going to be able to get it through uh, reg- regulatory issues. Interesting. Really? Yeah. So it might be. Then 2025 kind of the is... Yeah. There was a pack meeting on Monday night uh, and at the Honda, and apparently the guys were just told like how Cognizant. fucking complicated. Sorry, damn it, Cognizant. how at the Cognizant, and they were just told like how incredibly complicated this is. Wow, shit, yeah. fuck. So twenty twenty six, we're looking good. Yeah, that's we're looking yeah. good. All right, last one. Manchester Derby is this weekend. Manchester United against Manchester City. Manchester United are horrific in free fall. There's rumors about the coach leaving. Every player in the world is is injured, and Erling Holland that scored five. Your team, goals I in, believe, is that right? Yes, and Erling Holland okay. scored five goals in a Premier League game yesterday. So the question is, how many goals, total goals, will be scored in the Manchester Derby this weekend? Manchester United against Manchester City. Any historical do you, context? Do you have any data? Uh, yeah, Man City. I'll I'll give you some recent results. Man City are really hitting their stride. They scored six goals against Luton. They scored. Oh, they only scored one in their previous three. And then they had three goals before that, three goals before that. Manchester United, kind of an a- average soccer team when it comes to scoring. They had uh, one goal, two goals, two goals, three goals, two goals. So you get sort of a guess. Okay. Okay. Trent's removing hearts? What the hell is going on? Yeah, I, actually, I was hitting just as I jumped in here. I thought the – it's hard to tell. All right. I was just hitting things. This, this like could be the game that gets the coach fired for Man United. If they lose, if they get like embarrassed by their crosstown rivals, it, it might be it might be time. Sorry, I'm always I always like that. I like the <laughs> back against the juice the wall. Behind, just the juice behind like a yeah a fire game yeah. is always mm-hmm. it always gets like the Islanders had that this year. With Lane Lambert like once they lost, it was just like he's getting fired tonight, and he did. It was like it was, <laughs> it was, it was a lot of, it was a lot of juice behind that. It's crazy how like all the speculation on Twitter is pretty much what's happening like in the yeah. suite they're like this really? is, yeah, we got to get rid of this guy <laughs> you really learn that in drive to survive you learn that like 
the exact chatter that's going on, and then they show it, and it's exactly what like Christian is talking to his crew about. How much of it drives the other way? Like, is it? Are they looking at it like, all right, we got everybody hates this guy. We got to get rid of this guy. Like, does it? Does the Twitter chatter inform what's going on in the owner's box? There's probably I mean, some, yeah. I, got, I mean, so. I don't think Lou Lamorella is reading tweets, but at some point, I just think the aura in the world you just feel just it. like you feel it like the, yeah. everyone's booing the guy and it's like got to get rid of him. Simple as that. Yeah. Trotting this guy out. It's like it's mean at some point. <laughs> all right. We're all in Riggs four, Frankie two, Trent four, Dan Rappaport all right. five, all man city. Note wow. myself three. All right. There we go. OK. That's close to the pin. Bang. Love it. Bang. That's it. Uh, all right. Anybody have anything else? Anything pressing? Anything they got to get off their chest? Anything oh, they would like um, to say? You guys watch The Bear? I have not. No. Couldn't recommend it more. Her more great go bear. watch it. It's just a different type of viewing experience. You're going to fucking love it. There's two seasons. They're fast episodes. It's on um, It's an FX show, but I think it's on Hulu. 38-minute episodes. Some of the really good episodes are an hour long, but you want them to be. And it's just... it's. Jeremy Allen White, I think is his name. Yeah. He takes over a restaurant and it's just the characters are in it. You're going to love forever. It's a great, great, it's like an all time character show. Okay. Each character you're going to know, you're going to love, you're going to cry, you're going to laugh. It's great. All right. Watch it. I'll watch, watch it tonight. I've been watching, yeah, I've, good. I've been binging Veep. I, I've been, I, yeah, I, Veep's I, incredible. I had never watched it before and it's definitely a show that I it was on my list. I, 28 minute episodes. And I plowed oh. through two seasons, over two and a half seasons over the weekend. That show is Dude, Jonah, on, Jonah. Jonah is so fucking funny. When he just drops like the dirtiest lines ever. Like, oh, my God. Licking clit. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> I, 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 I haven't gotten to that one oh. yet, but I've seen that one. But Oh, he's yeah. just the best, dude. The whole cast he's is great. Matt Walsh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Everybody's great. Best writing ever. It's so fast and quick and funny. I finished uh, True Detective. Worst show of all time. Okay. Truly. But you couldn't stop watching it. Couldn't stop watching it. Truly, truly the worst writing ever. I, 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 I like you guys won't watch it, but like maybe I don't want to ruin it for people if they're going to somehow go back and watch it. The ending is so laughably bad that I actually I, I want to like talk to the writers and say, how did you do this? Yeah, <laughs> I heard it was bad. <laughs> it's as bad as you could think. Yeah, which makes I you want to watch it. It's the same it thing with this Madam Web movie. Uh, it's getting the worst yeah. reviews in history, and it's making it yep. be a must-see movie for me. Like, I think we're going to yeah. get a group here at the office to go because I just you have to see. It's a kind of a good place to live. You either want to be the best movie of all time, or you want to be yeah. the worst movie of all time. Yeah, and you're going to get views. You don't want to be a middling movie. Um, Roy McRoy has responded to Taylor Gooch's comments. Oh, whoa! He uh, incredibly diplomatic for the first thirty seconds. He said, "To be fair to Taylor Gooch." If you go look at the line of questioning, the reporter questioner kind of led him down like that path. And then his second half of his answer was, you know, it's an invitational. The masters are going to invite whoever they want. And he said, if you look, they invited Joaquin Neiman, who's been chasing his tail all around the world to try to basically put himself in a position to get invited. And he was like, and I can't say the same for Taylor. This podcast was right. They were pretty spot on. We were right. The questioning yeah, we were... and playing the game. That's it. Wow. We nailed it. Do we know golf or what? Come on, man. No golf. Come on. Also, do we know golf right now? Next Hi, match. Haters. Next match. Taylor Gooch, Roy McIlroy. Let's do it. Wow. Bang. Bang. All right. Uh, next time we're all together, we'll well, except for Dan, <laughs> we'll be out here in uh, California, that and then mean. the real next time we're together, we'll it all never be stops, in. Trent. It just never stops. Myrtle's, I love you, Myrtle. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, one of our favorite places. Uh, Dan will be playing in the queue. Then we've got the Barstool Classic kickoff, which we're all going to be at. Uh, we're probably going to try to film a couple videos down there as well. And then the following week, we got a bunch of events going on at uh, Sawgrass, in Sawgrass area, Jacksonville for the Players' Championship. We're going to be all over that place as well. So things are starting to heat up. Big thanks to everybody for listening. A big thanks to all of our sponsors, Cars.com, TaylorMade Fireball. We'll be back next week. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard. Hit it hard.